Yeah. Time now for the MMA After Hour. So much to discuss. Got a couple polls out. So much going on in the world of MMA. So let's bring back Mr. New York Rick. Hello. There he is. Did we get good questions? I feel like this was a good week for questions because there's a lot of things that need to be debated. Did we get good questions? Yeah. We always get good questions. Well, the fans always... Uh, sometimes not great. Deliver. Sometimes not great. Uh, we did have some good questions this week. But let's start with yours, as we yeah. are want to do. Yes. Question of the day number one by Ariel Hawani. Is Demetrius Johnson the greatest fighter of all time? What's your response to that? It's a Is complicated question. Oh, it's a complicated you're, you're question. Gonna, you're going to okay. soft sell your own listen, question? Listen, it's a complicated question. I wanted to see where the people lied on this one because here's the thing. Numbers-wise, facts-wise, yeah, you can strongly make that case. The numbers don't lie. He is the winningest champion in UFC history. He's the most successful champion in UFC history. He's the most dominant champion in UFC history. No one has ever done what he has just done, right? That's a fact. Fact. But then you have the issue of strength of schedule. Then you have the issue of, you know, the new weight class. Then you have the issue of, oh, you know, no former champions, blah, 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 blah. blah. Is that his fault? No. But is he sometimes a victim of it? Yes. So I don't know. If you want to tell me right now, after what he did on Saturday and how he did it and the way in which he punctuated his place among the greats, pulling off that submission, which once again, may be the greatest I've ever seen in my life. Suplex to armbar. I was blown away by it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. If you want to tell me after that, I have no problems with it. Because you know, I've been passionate about this. About DC, John Jones. I have absolutely no problems with it. You want, you want to weigh in? You want to weigh in on the PEDs thing? I think if you have a mark on your record, you're excluded from that. If you have failed for PEDs in the past, you are excluded from that conversation. So as of right now, until we get some closure to the John Jones situation, these are my top three. You want to hear my top three? Let's hear it. These are my top three as far as pound for pound all time. Right now, I'm talking about the greatest of all time. Demetrius Johnson, George St. Pierre, Daniel Cormier. That's right now. And I know the last one will be somewhat debated, but that's right now. We'll see what happens with uh, John Jones, but that's as of right now. I'm putting him on the sidelines for now. Um, but yeah, wh wh what did the people say? So the poll results, yes. you, you offered three options. Yes, no, and TBD explain below. Okay, well, which, the TBD sort of refers to like, oh, does he have to go up and-, and Yeah, I got you. Blah, blah. That he could be or sure. he He's is on, with a caveat, yeah. whatever the case may be, you know, d sitting on the fence like, like you are. Um, mm. So the results are in- after 16,541 votes, yes, 54%, no, 37%, and 9%, TBD explained below. Um, I'm not about to hop in and read all those explanations, no. but that was a low enough. I was expecting that number to be more, to be quite frank. Really? I actually thought it would be less. I thought that number would be very high because I think there's a lot of people who are conflicted with Demetrius where they want to say yes, but the quality of his competition has prevented them from saying yes. And I think longevity can solve that or a, a contender coming out of nowhere can solve that. Um, but I think that I thought there would be more people who would who would say yes with a caveat and that would be the TBD. Hmm. Um, but outright, it seems to be people are saying yes. Demetrius Johnson is the greatest fighter of all time at 54%. It's hard to argue against it. You could bring that up and that's what makes this debate fun. There's no right answer. I think that's a very valid concern sure. with his resume. But here's the thing. Demetrius Johnson, bantamweight, who was just kind of thrown in the tournament. The fact that five years later, he is in this discussion, which there's no doubt about it. If you don't think he's the best of all time, he's certainly in the top three, right? Bare minimum. Yeah. I mean, that's a feat in its own right. And now he holds a record and he has no blemishes, no PD failures. Yep. No rests. Yep. No embarrassments. Well, come on. I, I mean, an arrest can't be held against a guy. I'm just saying. Kind of conversation. I'm just saying. It's like, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just going down the list. Like, the guy has not done anything. Yeah, squeaky there, clean. There's not one blemish. Like, you can't even say, oh, yeah, but you remember the time 
that, you know, he threw the bottle at a press. Like, there's nothing that you could say, literally nothing, unless I'm forgetting something. There is nothing that any doubter can say about uh, this man. You know, the the dribbling in that basketball challenge that, was, that, that he had for whack. you was pretty, was was pretty you're terrible. Right. You're right. You're, I See, I take it back. I forgot. <laughs> um, no, on a, on a serious note, though, you're absolutely right. He's done everything the right way. Everything, everything. the right way. But it, if you are to say the level of competition he faced is not that of the others the the peers in this conversation you wouldn't be wrong it's hard to it's hard to argue against that as well but i think where that argument could be countered is that he's risen to that level every time the competition he has faced he's completely outclassed the competition he has faced he's finished now you know there was a time where he was winning decisions at this point he's a finisher there's no argument about that um he maybe it's coming late it doesn't really matter Demetrius Johnson is going in there to finish fights, and he's doing it. Um, he's also pulling off things we've never seen before. I mean, I can't say that enough. Think about the strength that is required to pull off what he did on Saturday. Absolutely. Like, to actually suplex another human being and then catch them Yeah, by transition the arm. to the arm bar before they hit the ground. It's just insane. And he and, didn't and have a lot of room to work with, right? The, he was up the, against the cage. The surest sign of this oh, is... God. The how impressed other fighters are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not, if you're, if you're somebody on the outside, it's one thing. If you're the other fighters and you are, you know, willing to to give praise for how hard that is, um, and and the same goes for his career. It, the fighters are willing to say he is the greatest of all time. Um, it, it's it's becoming less and less of a of a debate and more of you know a, a runaway for Demetrius being the greatest, but. It's, you know, as a complete, it's where I think you, the biggest, the, be, the best argument for him being the greatest of all time comes is, can you find a weakness in his game? And the answer is you can't. He's well-rounded everywhere. He, there's, not a, there's not a thing you can take away from him that will make you have a path to victory. I, I truly believe that unless, you know, the, the quality of competition changes, unless a new contender rises or somebody drastically improves and now I don't want to discount Henry Cejudo who seems to always be making great advancements and changes to his game so there could be a scenario where that happens but at the moment there's not somebody who can exploit any area of Demetrius Johnson's game and if that doesn't make you um, you know one of the best fighters at the moment and continuously one of the best fighters ever nothing does he he doesn't have at, at this point a weakness um and, you know, you could point to losses that he had at 135, but let's be honest about that. That's not, he was small in that weight class. That was not where he belonged. This is his weight class, and he's ruled it with an iron fist. And uh, at this moment, it's hard to say that John Jones is, is still the best of all time, although I was firmly in that camp for, for a very long time. I would have to, I'd be swayed at this point to say Demetrius Johnson. And I, I just don't get the resistance to him. Like, well, like some people say to me, like, oh, he's too small. What does that mean? What does that mean? No one, 205, 185, 170 has done what he just did on Saturday, that maneuver. Like, just because he's small, that makes you think less of him. Like, how do you know? When DJ well, fights, so I, it feel, to me, it feels like a big deal. I feel like I'm witnessing greatness. How sure. often can we say that? Not a guy who's just like squeaking by, not a guy I, who is just like winning wars. Like, I am witnessing dominance and greatness. How does that not excite you? I think box office matters to some people. I think the idea that why should I care if if everybody else doesn't care is a is a conversation to be had. Well, that's stupid. It, why should I care if everyone else doesn't care? If nobody's tuning in, what makes it so great? Oh, come on. If if nobody wants to see it, because some fans just can't get over the size thing. I think it's strictly but that's, that, which is that's dumb, that's what it is. Which is dumb. Dumb. The as size hell. thing matters. The size thing matters. Now, does it matter to how good he is as a fighter, I, I would say no. It, it's In fact, it's completely irrelevant. I'd say it has 0% to do with how great he is as a fighter. But does it does it affect some fans in terms of where they're going to rank people all time or where they're going to place their uh -huh. heroes? I think it does. And, and that's, that's bearing, you know. If Demetrius Johnson was a heavyweight, if Demetrius Johnson was a light heavyweight, if Demetrius Johnson was anywhere above where he is, I don't think this would even be a conversation. His, no, his numbers, his resume, it all speaks for itself. So there is there is part of that that impacts this conversation. Does it impact how good he is a, as a fighter? In my opinion, no. 
obviously not. It, it doesn't matter if he's doing it in, in his backyard or if he's doing it here. He is the best fighter. I love the idea of fighters on this Monday going to the gym and trying that move because I bet sure. you that there are some who are going to be trying that and, move. And that is, you know, that type of greatness That's is the what inspires compliment. the other fighters. You know, the Showtime kick. Yep, How many exactly. people did that inspire to jump off the cage? That was his Showtime kick. That was his front kick, Anderson Silva front kick, right? Yeah. Like, there are some iconic moments. That was one of them. Now, this could be a turning point. Maybe that moment was the one yeah. that he needed to define him. But if I'm if I'm filling out a ballot, is Demetrius Johnson the greatest fighter of all time at this moment? I would say yes. Who has a better shot of beating him, Henry Cejudo or Sergio Pettis? Because it seems like the winner is next. Oh, I would say Cejudo yeah. by, by a long shot. Oh, interesting. Um, Who wins that fight? Cejudo or Pettis? I think Cejudo. Um, I was impressed by Pettis in his latest performance. I was more impressed by Cejudo. And I also just think Cejudo's operating with a with a a tool bag that he is already vast. His his you know wrestling experience is already something he can lean on and then continue to expand upon. And it looks like his hands are coming along um very, very nicely. So I would say Cejudo is probably a bigger threat, but I'd still say uh Benavidez is the biggest threat um out of out of all the, the flyweights. So I'd be happy to see that again. I'd be be happy to see Cejudo, Pettis. It doesn't really matter. It's more about Demetrius at this point. Um, it's a pleasure. It's, it's everything about. I mean, look, I could be biased because of how good he is to the media, how good he is to the show, how good he is to to me. But like after pulling that off, well, record breaker. What's also helping him more than that is the other ones are falling. Yeah, the other ones are hurting their their convert their place in the conversation more so than anything he's doing. He's he's just chugging along and continuing to to excel, but other people are taking themselves out of the conversation, which is unfortunate, but that that is helping him more than anything. It's just so rare in this sport to see greatness of this kind and then to not have a single other blemish. Like to 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 think that this guy is at the top of his sport right now and is like just going back home, you know, driving his kids to school, doing the dishes, you know, cleaning his yard. He's just a regular guy. That's just the most amazing part of it. And it shouldn't be that. That shouldn't feel amazing. But because we're so used to, you know, money and all, like, like think about what the whole premise of the Conor Floyd feud was, which I enjoyed. Don't get me wrong, but it was just all about money. It was just all about who's richer than who. None of that comes into play with DJ. He doesn't make people feel smaller than him. Uh, it's hard to, at some point, it's hard to relate to the other stuff. He's an everyman, he but is. yet he's pulling off superhuman things. But we we don't want to be Demetrius. We want to be Conor McGregor. That's the difference in in why people are gravitating toward one versus the other. You don't want to be the guy who is just going in and punching his his ticket and getting it done. Yeah, you want to be the guy who's, not, uh, who's living it up and lavish. If, and, if he was just yachts. winning boring decisions, you can call him that. But he's not doing that. He is literally doing superhero things. And, yeah. and, and the UFC needs to recognize that. They need to push him more. They need to figure out a way to package and market this guy in the right way. Because whatever they're doing isn't working. If no. you can't market this man, if you can't make him appeal to the mass audience the mainstream, after doing things like that, there's nothing more that you can do. And, and you I should think just give up at this point. There's there's a there's a misconception that he's outside the cage, not an interesting character, where I think no. there's things you can capitalize on that he is an interesting character, especially, obviously, his video game acumen and um, all he's doing with Twitch and all that stuff. Um, I think there's ways that you can you can figure it out. Anyway, forget about all that. Bow down to the king. Um what what he did is something that we've never on, seen before. Yeah. On 10, 9, 17, I think most of us and your poll says that Demetrius Johnson is the greatest. Amazing. Poll number two. Yes. Who do you want to see Conor McGregor fight next? Now, I mean, this says it all, right? Conor McGregor is in the conversation. Didn't even fight, but it's it's the Conor McGregor lottery ticket. Well, sure, but it that, was his division. So, I mean, that this Tony is Ferguson actual. punched. Look, I'll say this about Tony Ferguson. He passed with flying colors. He did, you know, we were talking last week. Will, it's not just good enough to win. You got to call him out. You got to entice him. You got to pick a fight. And he did it. And I thought he wasn't going to. I thought he would, you know, play the ego card and say, eh, forget that guy. I'm the champ. No, he didn't do that. He picked the fight. His comments today, he's picking a fight. He's enticing him. Now, I'm not sold. When I hear Dana White say, that's the next fight, I mean, have we not paid attention to history? That may be what he wants to do in the moment, 
But he also said the same thing about GSP and Bisping, and that fight is happening in less than a month. How many times have we been told that a fight is not happening, that they're going in a different direction? And oh, by the way, look what happens. A funny thing happened along the way. So let me go back to my comments on the MA beat less than two weeks ago when I talked about Nate Diaz. I still maintain that the Nate Diaz fight makes more money because Joe Sports Fan knows Nate Diaz, knows about the feuds, knows about the fights, the, the, the history, is able to reference it. Throughout the Mayweather-McGregor fight, every time I talk to, or the build-up to it, every time I talk to a, a mainstream, a non-MMA sports fan, or a media outlet that doesn't usually cover the sport, they only reference the Diaz fights. It's like those were the only two fights that Conor had. For whatever reason, those broke through. So I still believe that that's the fight that makes more money, given that reason. And I don't put it past the new ownership team to want to go for the quick fix. You get what I'm saying? They're going to try to go for the, the home run. They're going to try to go for the most amount of money. It's not been a good year for them. But the fight that should happen is Tony Ferguson. That's the fight that should happen. They have to unify the belts. And I think Connor is starting to recognize that. And I think Connor is starting to realize that for his legacy at this point, you won the featherweight title almost two years ago. It's going to be 22 months. You won the lightweight title almost 12 months ago, and you haven't defended it once. And, 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 and it's not 100% fair to put that onus on him because he was ready to fight and things happened along the way. And then, you know, they, they, they allowed him. We've gone through the story a thousand times. The Mayweather thing is kind of an anomaly. But now, the same way Aldo defended it against you, you, you got you, you to gotta play. Like, that is the way this sport works. If we break that system, the sport is broken. And so it's very important to keep that train moving along. And what's even better about it is Tony Ferguson is freaking good. He's on an unbelievable winning streak. I think it's 11 now, right? Yep. He's the interim champion. He's earned it. He's beat a who's who at 155. His run, getting to the belt has been phenomenal. He's fought all the fighters in his way. I don't think he has to go through Khabib. I think that ship has sailed, at least for yeah. now. At some point, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see them go back to it. But for now, it doesn't make sense. I don't think it makes sense to defend the interim title. If Connor is ready to fight, it, it has to be him. Yeah. And I think it will be a big fight. You know, does it get over a million? Yes. Connor against anyone gets over a million. But the feud there, the personalities, it will do very well. I don't think it does as well as Diaz just because of who Diaz is. So I wouldn't be surprised if they still go the Diaz route. And this is just my opinion. This is not with any other information. But it's going to be very interesting. Is is there... By the way, sorry to interrupt you. The same management team paradigm represents both guys. And at first glance, you would think this is a perfect scenario, right? Win-win. Win-win. I don't get the feeling that they want it. That's just my opinion. I don't. I, I get the feeling that they're going for the big, the big money fight, is Nate, and it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. But the fight that needs to happen is Tony versus Connor, because yes. you know what? One, sorry, one more thing. I don't mean to interrupt. Connor versus Nate can happen at any point. Like, like Connor loses to Tony if it happens, he fights Nate. That fight's just as big, in my opinion, and it sells just as much. That's why keep it on ice. Do your thing. Do Tony versus Connor now. Unify those belts and let's get back to normal. And by the way, if they do that fight, then I think it's totally okay. Connor wins to then go to Nate. But you got to defend it just once. Mm -hmm. And I think he recognized that. Look at those comments. It that's he looks for drives. He looks for motivation. He looks for like little things to attach to. So with RDA, of course, with Aldo's for the belt. Then with RDA was to become the 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 two weight world champion, and then the Diaz rematch was to get back at what happened, and then the Floyd thing was the Floyd thing, and of course Eddie, like he needs a thing. He needs to be motivated. I think his motivation now is to say, all right, you guys don't think I want to defend my title? Here you go. I'm going to defend it against the interim champion. I'm going to shut this guy up, and then I'll go get Diaz. That to me is the way to play this. Yep, you're making the same money regardless. You answered the question. I was I was going to say, is there an expiration date on the Diaz fight? That would be the only reason to do it beforehand. I don't think you're saying is. no. I mean, the second one just happened. It was just a year ago. You know, like the first two happened within the span of five months. I do feel like there's momentum loss, though, at this point. This has been too too long for me to get as excited about it as I could have. Will will I will I be excited about it when it inevitably happens? Yes, but there is some. I, I feel like there is some momentum loss at this. I point. I think it depends on Nate. 
to a degree? Does he completely disappear? Does he pop up for another fight? Is he a lot more active? Right now, he's kind of, you know, taking a laissez-faire approach. I'm not convinced that that fight, the Ferguson fight, is set in stone, but I think it's the fight that should happen. And Ferguson just has an unbelievable amount of momentum behind him. And I just want to see it. Like, for, forget about everything else. For, forget about, like, the trash talk, the backstory, the feud, the management stuff. I just love the matchup. And I feel like we saw the Nate fight twice. And so can we just wait a second on the third? Let that one age. Let's see, the, let's see these two trains collide. That's the matchup. It's nice to be Conor McGregor. Oh, man, he's got options galore. Options galore. Like, I, I really want to see Conor fight Max. I want to see Conor fight Max. I want to see Conor fight Khabib. I want to see Frankie Conor Edgar. Fight. I mean, like, there's there's a, there's a million fights for him. Uh, but right now, with what Tony did and said and how he's rolling, it's hard to get more excited, in my opinion, than about that fight. So, with 18,224 votes oh, wow. at the moment. That's a lot of votes. 63% of the people agree with you. Tony Ferguson has got to fight Conor McGregor next, followed by Nate Diaz at 25%, followed by Pauli Malignaggi uh, with 8%, I just and then that other the, with 4%. I just did that for the people. 8%. <laughs> Who are the, They're all trolls. You want to know how many people were trolls in that poll? 8%. I mean, let's be real. The other 4% are probably trolls too. Yeah. It's a two-horse oh, race. Oh, you know what? Maybe it could be... Maybe... maybe uh, no. Alvarez Gaethje. It's a two-horse race at this point. But how, how are you going to give it to Alvarez Gaethje if you've got an interim champion? I, the I, only guy that will trump Tony at this point is Nate. It's a two-horse race. Yeah, and, and I think it has to be. And Tony has done everything in his power to not only get to this point, win the title, chase Conor McGregor. He, he has done everything. He, he has earned this opportunity tenfold. Yeah. It's time yeah. for, for this fight. Man, what a great fight. He said he'd chase him down to freaking featherweight. <laughs> he had a great line. I think, I think, uh, yeah, Sean. Sean Alshadi did tweet it. Connor needs his ass kicked and we need to unify that belt. Otherwise, he needs to vacate, set it down, walk away, and never effing come back. Because if you go to 170, if you go to 185, or even if you drop down to 145, I will effing follow you, Connor. And I will haunt your effing dreams, kid. And I will come after you. And one day, no matter what, whether we have the same management or not, you will F and see me again. And I will put some pain on you, bro. <laughs> That's great stuff. Sorry. He wants it. It's great. And he deserves it. Okay. Will McGregor versus Ferguson get done in time for December 30th? Or are we looking at 2018? I like St. how St. Patrick's I Day. I like how Niall tagged McConlin too. Um Yeah. Well, the problem with St. Patrick's Day at MSG, as I said earlier, was the Knicks are playing that night. So Who cares? They can move that. Yeah, well, the, the season hasn't even started and they're already eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah, they can move that. The Knicks, Listen, the I wouldn't mind. Trash. It's, it's an abomination at this point, but I don't think that that will happen. Now, if it happens a week later, a week before, it doesn't really matter. Let's be honest. Tony says he's ready by yeah. end of year. Is Connor ready? Dana said on Saturday that Connor said he's ready. I think they want that fight to happen then. I don't think time has expired I think it all comes down to money at this point I think Connor has four fights left on his deal what is the UFC going to do how are they going to pay the piper how's he going to go from making 100 million to whatever they want to pay him because he's certainly not going to come back for the amount of money that they are contractually obligated to pay him based on that last deal that he signed prior to the Aldo fight 194 what's going on back there you made a funny face no nope. did I break the fourth wall Oh, you're good. Um, so anyway, I think they want it to happen. I think Tony would be down. I think Connor would be down. Could they get the deal done? That remains to be seen. Speaking of Tony, our front runner at the moment, do you think Tony dropped the ball in his post-fight interview? This is from Cody Spillane. What? Get you out liked of it. You I had loved it. it. Great it. I great it. It was perfect. A plus. It was perfect. perfect. It was Tony Ferguson's A+. Plus. You get what I'm saying? Like, everyone's kind of different. Like, don't copy Nate. Don't copy this guy. Like, that, I was just afraid. And maybe my expectations were low. I was afraid that he would just, remember when he beat RDA? And we yep. were like, call outs, Connor. Remember? Yep. He walked away. He didn't say anything. 
the the evolution of Tony's character over the last week. He talked about it starting in, in training camp. Compare the Tony Ferguson at the Verdum luncheon to the Tony Ferguson that we saw last week. Completely different guy. I really think that the Vegas shooting affected him. And so I was wondering if he would just no-sell it. If his ego would get the better of him and he'd be like, nah, I'm not going to talk about that guy. He's a nobody. He called him McNuggets, which is fine. But then he did the whole like, you know, dr- well, blah, blah, drop it, this and that. It, it was it was, it was was perfect for Tony. And I think he backed it up very well at the press conference. I think he backed it up very well here and he's doing other media. He's playing it perfect. And by the way, it's important for him to continue to be active and 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 vocal. Don't play the cool card. This is not the time. Look at what happened with Nate. He took the bull by the horns. Seize that moment. Don't play the cool card. I think what's helped him is that previously attentions were diverted, right? Because he has an interim title shot. It doesn't seem like Conor McGregor is coming back. He has to keep his attention there. He has to keep his attention on McGregor. Now that he has this belt, he is the he is the king, and he can singularly focus on Conor McGregor. I think he's freed up for that opportunity to be able to chase him, to be able to call him out, to be able to go after that. He doesn't have to think about Habib. He doesn't have to think about anything else. Conor McGregor can be his sole focus. And if he has to, and if it doesn't happen next, maybe Nate gets to fight. He can defend his title, but he can he can now use this and, and focus on Conor McGregor and doesn't have to worry about anything else. Remember when he was on the show a couple of months back and he was talking about Nate? He just, it didn't click the same way, right? It actually clicked more today about Nate, which was kind of like a side note, than it did a few months ago. Sure. We said both those guys don't want to fight me. It's just great. When fighters like and by the way, Tony, who, who, thinks that he, who thinks that he dropped the ball? I mean, come on. Yeah, I thought it was super solid. Um, when fighters uh, from Christopher Kitt, when fighters like uh, Tony Ferguson or Kamaru Usman complain about the media or lack of, uh, thereof, does that ever disappoint you? No. Essentially, really. lack of media attention, is, that, is, that an, is the onus on the media? Is the onus on the fighters? Where does that fall and, and does it disappoint you? It's hard to paint everyone with the same brush. So I don't take it personally. I mean, at times, look, I, I address this. Like Tony blocked me on Twitter. I was sort of confused by it. I walked up to him at the Mayweather McGregor first press conference and he blew me off and I was disappointed. I want to have a good relationship with everyone. I want to cover everyone fairly. I want everyone to be happy with our coverage. It's hard to cover everyone. It's hard to give everyone that shine. My show's only once a week. There's only so much real estate. There's only you know so much time that we can devote to everyone's story because there's so many darn events. I don't take it personally though. That's why I love, I love have, like when there's a guy who has a conflict with me, I love having him on the show. Mickey Gall, Ben Askren, Tito Ortiz, Rampage Jackson, uh, I've asked Dana to come on the show. I've asked Dana to do interviews. Like I, I prefer that this 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 life is is too short to hold on to these grudges. So if you have a problem with me or my coverage, let's talk it out. Let's figure it out. Let's let's make it better. So it doesn't bother me. I'm, I, I am so happy. I was worried that Ferguson wouldn't talk to me. I'm so happy that we're buddies again. Speaking of buddies, what's next for Kevin Lee? Oh, um, one of our new favorites. Yeah. What's next for the Motown Phenom? Uh, this is from Baju. Uh, should he go up, maybe stay at lightweight and manage his weight differently? What, what's next for... By the way, how cool is Kevin know? Lee? After I did that interview with him on Wednesday, backstage, we're walking off and he's like, hey, Ariel, save me a spot on Monday after I win the belt. Now, unfortunately, didn't win the belt. He's not feeling well. But the fact that he even thought like, I don't know, this is becoming a thing here and I like it very much. Maybe I don't have to book the show anymore. People will just book themselves onto the show. Anyway, um, as we said earlier, I have no doubt he'll be back. And I hope it's in the 165 pound division. So I've been talking about this. You know, there, there's a serious issue with weight cutting. And I believe that until someone gets seriously hurt or unfortunately dies, they're not going to change anything. And there's a lot that goes into it. There's not a quick fix. I recognize that. People are always going to overcut, dehydrate themselves, not do it the right way. And I actually think that the UFC is doing all that it can as far as the Performance Institute is concerned. But more needs to be done. More needs to be done because look what happened with Kevin Lee. There was another scary incident overseas. And so I threw out the idea more weight classes. And when you think about it, like I got all of these, I got all of these responses. Oh, you're going to water down the sport like boxing. We have enough weight classes. First of all, the UFC currently has 
two interim champions, 185 and 155. They recently had a 145 interim champion as well. Guess how many weight classes I'm advocating to add? Two. Two more. 125, 135, 145, 155, 165, 175, 185, 195, 205, 265. There's not enough talent between 205 and 265 to splinter that. So I'm only advocating to add two. How to? Well, give Tyron Woodley, if we're doing it today, the option. You're either going to 175 or you're going to 165. I suspect he goes to 175. So you're adding 165 and you're adding 195. That's it. But I think that the jump between 155 to 170, 170 to 185, and 185 to 205 is just too drastic. It's just too drastic in this day and age. It worked in 2005 and six when we had, you know, eight shows, five champions. That was fine. The game has changed. And, and, and if you look, there's just so many fighters at 155 and 170. There's a glut of them. So people say to me, that's not the answer. Of course, that's not the sole answer. There is no sole answer. But that is the cheapest and quickest thing that the UFC could do right now. If you want to institute weight cut reform, if you want to institute year-round weigh-ins, that stuff, A, costs money, takes a lot of time. I'm not sure if the fighters are going to be into that. That's treating someone as an employee. They already are, are, are skirting that line with USADA. You want to be a fighter and get weighed in 365? You want to be dieting all year when you're only fighting two to three times a year? Who wants to do that? Who's going to agree to do that? No one's going to agree to do that. You, you, want, you want someone to show up to your house and weigh you in? That stuff costs money. Who's paying for that? USADA? No. Who's paying for that? The UFC? Who's paying for that? The commissions? No way. Other than Nevada and California, maybe one or two more, none of them have money. Who's paying for that? If you have a fight coming up in Virginia, they're going to they're gonna come weigh you a month out, two months out, the whole card. Even in California, they only weighed the, the title fights prior to UFC 214. So the quickest thing that they could do right now, in my opinion, and the cheapest thing, open up the divisions. Just give the fighters more opportunities to make weight. Give them more options. Give them more weight classes so that if you're a guy like Kevin Lee who's teetering, hey, you've got an option at 165. Now, do the fighters need to educate themselves? Yes. Is part of it on them and their team? Yes. Stop with the extreme weight cuts. Don't weigh 19 pounds, you know, 20 hours before the weigh-ins. Some of them has to be on you. There is part of this, or like, like you got to be a professional, right? Part, at some point, you got to take some of the blame. But I do believe that 165, 195, 175, part of the answer, not the sole answer, part of the answer. And I can't understand, I can't wrap my head around the people who are like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want that many champions. I don't, I don't want to water down the sport. First of all, are you that selfish as fans where you want everything to be nice and tidy for you. When I'm talking about adding two weight classes, when we already have two more interim champions, there's already the same number of champions. The UFC, why do they do the interim belts? Not because they have to, not because there's some rule that they need to uphold. It's because they need title fights to headline pay-per-views. That's their rule. Unless it's a Conor fight, they're not headlining a pay-per-view with a title fight. That's a hard rule. So that's why they're creating 125 for the females. That's why they did the interim lightweight title fight before DJ and Borg got moved to that card. That's why they did the interim featherweight title fight at 206 and at 209 for 155. Just have real divisions with real champions. Do it. 165, 195, move 170 to 175. It's clean. And then you got a 115, 125, 135, 145 with the women. Now you're in business. Educate the fighters. So, Kevin Lee, I want to see him back. I want to see him back at 165. Among many others. I hope he's feeling better. I reached out to him. Haven't heard back yet. Will, the, will this happen is our next question from Andrew Coughlin. Will there ever be men's categories from 125 I there to 205 be. in 10 pound increments? I, will, I, I, I believe there will be. I really do. It seems like there's really not a reason not to. And it's a quick fix. Well, you need the champions. Calling, uh, you know, let's hesitate on calling it a fix, but I think it's... It's part of the fix. It's something to do. It's well, quick. It's easy. If they announce today 165, I bet you. Go back at that tweet that I tweeted on Friday afternoon about adding the weight classes and look how many fighters retweeted it and liked it. 
active fighters. It's the more the merrier. And by the way, it opens up the possibility for super fights. Yep. Champion versus champion. Why are we sticking to this archaic model? 185, 170, 155, 2 at work. Like, what, what? No. Just do it in 10 pound increments. And by the way, there's still more in boxing. They go seven pounds. Yeah, to me, there's no downside to it. No downside. But I don't think it will do much good. I don't think it will have much of an, of an impact. I don't know. I think it just... Because weight cutting isn't about these guys. These guys know what the number is. They can either do it or they can't, and they're pushing their bodies too hard. It's not... If it's 165, they'll be five pounds, he- they'll be five pounds less heavy and still cut the same amount of weight. It's, it's, it's a systematic thing that's, that's encouraged uh, because you have to be bigger than your opponent. And if you're not, then in your head you're going to... Listen, gonna there's, there's a lot that could change, but look, we, we've seen in this sport... They, they, they instituted new rules, and they're not even freaking unified. There's yep. new unified rules that aren't even unified. Yep. All the commissions haven't adopted them. So you think that people are just going to you know pick up and change weight cutting and all this stuff? No, until something horrific happens. Even then, I think there'll still be, unfortunately. Oh, could you imagine if the PTIs and the sports centers and the Sports Illustrated start to really look into you know what's going on here? It's not happened yet. And so they're they're dodging massive bullets. Add the weight classes first step. I'm not again, I'm not saying it's a sole fix, but I think it goes a long way. I really do. Our next question. Why would the UFC and uh Nevada Athletic Commission allow Kevin to fight with staff? Is it contagious? Can Tony file some kind of suit against the, the state? Um should he be paid extra? Essentially, what happened with the staff situation? Well, Tony's not suing because he got his fight. Could you imagine how pissed he would have been if that fight would have been pulled? He like you heard him. He he is not concerned at all. At least he's not saying he is. If he is, um, how did they let him fight? It sounds like they missed it. It honestly sounds like he, he, they missed it. Um, our own Mark Ramundi spoke to Bob Bennett. He said that he was checked out. I will admit, I was. I was standing next to, 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 to Kevin where I was sitting in front of him, but I was on the opposite side of where I was kind of off. So I was on the opposite side of his chest, but we had pictures. We, we, I mean, the video, we all missed it. He was right in front of us on, on uh, Friday. We all missed it. So I, I, I just think they missed it. Kudos to him for being honest. Kudos to Joe Rogan for bringing it up like right away. He pointed it out right away. And I don't know how he saw it via monitor and no one else saw it backstage. But man, by all accounts, it is a pain to fight with that. It is it is painful as heck. It is draining to cut weight with that, to fight with that. I can't imagine. So, man, Kevin Lee, kudos to you. Although, if I like me being the germaphobe that I am, I'd be freaking out. Yeah, I don't know. Look, he had to take his opportunity. He got he got the opportunity that he's been asking for and took it. But um, this is life changing stuff. I didn't expect him to pull out. Yeah. But it sort of sheds light on the issues with cutting weight. And, uh, you know, who knows if his performance was I have to imagine affected. that it was impacted. By the way, while we're talking about the weigh-ins very quickly here, you know those hoops that they have for the women? Why don't the they just use shame. those for the men? All these weigh-ins now, Dana's not there. So, like, him and Burt Watson used to do it where they would wrap it around the guy at the ceremonial weigh-in, like when they only had one weigh-in. Well, now it's like a complete gong show. I wanted to say something else. But like I I I I've seen at least like fifteen fighters like completely naked at this point because they don't know how to rap. Why don't they just do the hoop for the, for the men and the women? Is it embarrassing for the men to have the hoop? It's clean. It's easy. Hmm. It's effective. No, I don't see why it would. Remember, be. there was a time when they didn't use the hoop for the women, like when Gina Carano was on the scale, like they had to hold up two sets of towels. They were doing that for a long time. I think it was Invicta that it's, Invicta. Yeah. yeah, just use it for everyone. Just plop it over them. No reason not to. It's such a mess sitting there at those open, uh, the, the the official ones in the morning. I mean, I've joked with Cormier about it. I mean, it's just like, it's there's no coverage whatsoever. Like for the guy's sake, I don't, the look, fighter is usually out of it when he stands there needing the, the towel. Protect the guy. This is not intended to have been a, a, a broadcast product. You know, I, I, I find it hard to fault that like, 
the time, the the. If I'm a fighter, of cover it. me up. It doesn't matter, sure. broadcast or not. Just cover me up. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they want to be seen. Yeah, I don't no. know. Now you've we, got. We, 15 we're on Long Island, and the guy was just full like, to to compare. You know. Listen, I'm happy they do it for the women. They deserve that. I think the men deserve it too. I agree. I mean, the, unless there's something I'm not thinking of, there's a. It, it well, seems I, like there's no reason not to. Maybe they don't the, think it's the, masculine. The I don't know, but it's but dumb. What's not masculine? It's just dumb. Be. I, the only reason I could think it would be not masculine is because it originated with Invicta. But other than that, like the hoop itself is not inherently masculine or feminine. No. Um, I don't see a reason not to use it, but I'm not, it's not really my area of expertise. So if, please, you know, weigh in. Maybe there's a reason that they're not using it. Maybe there's a reason that the standard towel is, is used. Weigh but, in. Uh, don't pardon the pun. Boom. Okay. Standby fighters. Should the UFC pay for fighters to be on standby to stop fights that get canceled because this is becoming so prevalent. It's a silly fix because, or solution or suggestion because, you know, you're, you're supposed to be a pro fighter. Will Brooks is preparing for Nick Lentz. You can't say, oh, by the way, uh, here comes Justin Gaethje, you know, or, or you know, throw out any lightweight. Um, so I, I just, we have to remember that these are professionals these are, this is their job. And there's a lot of risk here. You can get cut, your pay goes down. So to just be like, oh, let's plop in someone else. It, it doesn't work that way. Mighty Mouse's arm bar or the Boston Crab that we saw in the local scene for submission of the year? What's your vote right now? No brainer, the arm bar. I love the mousetrap name. Kind of bummed that he's not adopting it. The, well, the mighty maybe whiz bar. something better is coming. The whiz the bar. Mousetrap. The mighty plex is cooler than the whiz bar. I think he's trying to move away from the mouse stuff, mm. which is unfortunate. That's right. He did. Yeah, you know, he's trying to get rid of the mouse. He's trying to call himself mighty. I think he's trying to move hey, away. Hey, maybe from that. maybe the mouse thing was what was holding him back. Maybe, but yeah, that's that's the submission of the year for sure. It's not even close. It's not close. I mean, you talk about stakes, talk about everything. I'm I'm excited to see what the mousetrap really is. He's got something better. You think so? In, in the bag. Oh, That's what he you... said. Hmm. He said this to you. We're not listening. I... He said there is a mousetrap. It hasn't been shown yet no. in competition, but it exists. And he's ready to unveil it. Maybe we'll see the mousetrap soon. All right. But yeah. Should Demetrius go up to 135? Should TJ or Cody, the winner of that fight, go down to 125 to fight Demetrius? Is that the no, fight to make? No, what's no, 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 what's, no, no, what's no, the fight for no, Demetrius? No, no, no. What's the fight for Cody and TJ? Cody, TJ, winner fights the winner of Dominic. I, I, I want to get back to some kind of decorum here where, you know, these guys, I, I just, I like that the fighters have something to push for, to build for, to work towards. So I want the winner of Cody, TJ to fight the winner of Dom versus Jimmy. And then I want, especially if Sergio wins, that's a fresh matchup. And the new Henry Cejudo, the way he's striking, I always thought that Henry got that title shot too soon. And so I want that fight to produce the winner. Excuse me, the top contender. So no. Keep it clean for now. And by the way, I have no problem with him going for 20 straight. Let's see how far we can go with this. 20, that's, a, that's the number? Whatever it is. Something crazy. Why not? Make Robbie sure Dixon. that that record is unattainable. Robbie Dixon says, The weekend left me wondering what happens to the win bonus if a fight is deemed a draw. Oh, for the fighters? Correct. That is to the UFC's discretion. Yeah, discretionary. Yeah. If it holds together as currently assembled, Patrick Leary asks, Is UFC 217 the most stacked card in UFC history? Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know. It's a good card. It still doesn't even have its fifth pay-per-view fight you know what I'm saying it is pretty damn good though it's good it's a little top heavy I mean I don't know like if we're talking stack card most stack card ever can I just say this love the card love the fight I've been the one championing GSP Bisping love everything about it love Joanna Rose love Cody TJ those three are phenomenal Masvidal against Wonder Boy is great thoroughly disappointed with the promo the promo that they aired First, they had like a very sort of like cobbled together cheap one. And then I tweeted that and I'm like, oh, they didn't even do anything special. Remember last year for MSG, they had the guys at MSG and them walking and things like that. And it was 
really nicely produced. None of that this time. And then they had this promo that aired later at the end of the show where there was this VO, this this voiceover guy. Did you see this promo? I did, yeah. Oh, what is that? It was like so over the top. It wasn't really written well. They made it seem like he was like a Cape Crusader. He was done. Or maybe he wasn't. It was like, what is this? Come on, guys. This story is perfect. Oh, my God. Close the lights. Black. Just hear his voice. I have to walk away from the sport. Give me the date on the bottom right. I have to walk away from the sport. Battered, bruised. Walks away. People fighting in his in in his place. The the sport is moving on. I might come back. A, a, a comment here when he talked in Montreal a couple of years ago. Michael Bisping. George. You be blah, 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 blah. It comes back. The greatest champion of all time. Like, it's just like the thing writes itself. <laughs> and then they were like, <laughs> Meanwhile, in Montreal, George Champion. I'm like, oh, God, what was that? That was horrible. So disappointing. As good as the 214 promo was, and you know what I said about it? I said it was the greatest yeah. of all time. This was equally bad. Somebody please. Are we are we trying to sabotage the GSP? Like someone asked Dana White on Friday, what was your reaction? Literally, what was your reaction when you found out that George St. Pierre was coming back? Do you know what his Happy, response was? Right? He said something he said, benign. Awesome. Yeah. And awesome. it was just like, awesome. That's it. Like that press and that's why I was kind of I, I didn't know how to what to make of of like his demeanor and everything, because you know, a lot was going on in Vegas. We get to the press conference. And he says, all right, let's go. You know who these guys are. You know, let's get this thing started. They're, like if I, was, if, if, if I was the promoter of the UFC, UFC president Ariel Hawani, I would get on that stage and I would say, thank you everyone for coming. Our first show at MSG broke all kinds of records. I'm doing this off the top of my head. $18 million gate. One of the greatest nights in the sports history. We crowned our first ever two-weight world champion. We had one of the greatest women's fights of all time. It was phenomenal from top to bottom. People are still talking about it. People come up to me on the streets of New York every time I'm there and say, I was at the first ever card at Madison Square Garden. I was there. And guess what? More than 20,000 people have told me that. But guess what? MSG only holds 20,000. That's how big this card was. I got news for you, my friends. Round two, even better. We have somehow figured out a way to top our maiden voyage to the world's most famous arena. We have somehow figured out a way to give you, our fans, a better card. Let's start with the women. Joanna Jan Jacek is en route to becoming the most dominant female in MMA history. Forget about females. She's en route to becoming one of the most dominant champions in UFC history. She beats up everyone who comes in her way, including last year at MSG. She is unlike anyone we've seen in this sport, but she has never fought anyone like Rose Namajunas. Rose Namajunas came back in April and smoked the karate hottie. She has been fighting for this moment her entire life. In the mean streets of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Rose Namajunas for Sejuani and Jacek promises to be one of our greatest title fights of all time. Now, if that's not enough for you, for years we have talked about teammate versus teammate, friend versus friend. Every single time they have said no. That changes on November 4th. Cody Garbrandt will be defending his title for the first time against his former friend and teammate at Team Alpha Male, TJ Dillashaw. Dillashaw left the team, and now he's coming back to get the title he once wore. One of the greatest grudge matches in UFC history. One of the greatest grudge matches in MMA history. Cody Garbrandt is fighting TJ Dillashaw. They did a whole season of the Ultimate Fighter. We've been waiting for this fight for a year now, and they're finally going to get it on. These guys could not hate each other more. They could not despise each other more. They will settle their differences on November 4th. And if that is not enough for you, my friends, on November 4th, Saturday night, New York City, Broadway, Madison Square Garden, the greatest fighter of all time, the king of kings, one of the most dominant champions in UFC history, the owner of nine straight title defenses, the man who never lost his welterweight title, the man who walked away on top of the sport, did it unlike any other, the face of Canadian MMA, a pioneer, a trailblazer, 
George Rush St. Pierre, after a four year hiatus, is coming back to MMA. He is finally coming back. We all thought, including myself, that he would not come back. I'm, I'm playing Dana White here. Including myself, that he would not come back. And guess what? He's coming back. And guess what? He is trying to become just the fourth man in UFC history to be a champion in two different weight classes. He was once the 170-pound champion. He's now going to 185. He is going to take down Michael Bisping, or at least he's going to try. And guess what? If Michael Bisping wins on November 4th, he will be the only man in UFC history to beat both Anderson Silva and George St. Pierre. He would cement his place among the gods of MMA. He will cement his place among the very best. He will cement his place as one of the greatest middleweight champions of all time. George St. Pierre is trying to make history off his back. George St. Pierre is trying to stop Michael Bisping from becoming the winningest fighter in UFC history. George St. Pierre is coming back to regrain a new throne. Michael Bisping's not going to let him. This is all going down and more. Wonderboy Thompson, Jorge Masvidal. Can we get some of that? Can we get some excitement? Oh, can we get some loves? Can we get some excitement? That was it. That, that, that one, that one, that script wrote itself. That was the easiest one to pull off. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm 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 gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. It was a crazy week in Las Vegas. But if I am am hosting a UFC, give me the chance. If I am hosting a UFC 217 press conference, I am doing it like that. That card writes itself. That is one of the best cards. Yes, stacked. I don't know, but it is it is juicy. It is chock full of storylines. Can we sell this, please? Can we get people excited, please? I feel like you were saying no to this question and now you've <laughs> kind of, after that sell job, you almost, where you've backed yourself into a corner. UFC 217 is the most stacked card in UFC history. Did I sell you on the card? Are you? More Have you sold yourself <laughs> is the question. I'm a lot more excited. I'm fired up. So, so the answer is that UFC 217 is the most stacked card in UFC. It, the top three fights are great. They are. Is they it are. the most stacked? I don't know because I think of the whole entire picture. Yeah. It's, the top it's, three fights are fantastic. I mean, you can't get better than that. They are great. By the way, top three fights like pound for pound are better than last year's MSG card. Mm -hmm. I agree. Joanna versus Rose feels bigger than Carolina because she just wasn't that yep. big of a name. Cody versus TJ to me is bigger than Tyron versus Wonderboy. Agreed. You got that story there. Agreed. And then GSP coming back. Okay, now okay, now we can debate about Connor. That was big. Yeah, to me, GSP coming back is the best sort of maiden voice, uh, uh, sorry, a sophomore attempt at MSG that they could possibly go. Like, like that is pretty damn special. That and feels big. The, the combined star power there is, is huge. You know, Connor, Connor and Eddie is is obviously big. Uh, because Connor's going for two belts and Eddie uh, looked dominant at that point. But I think the combined star power of Bisping and GSP is, is huge and I'm with you on that. Every single person who tells me that they are not interested in that main event, you're a liar. You, you say, oh, look, first of all, Whitaker is not available. Yeah. And you're telling me you're more interested in Whitaker Bisping right now than the return of GSP. Are you really telling me that? One of the greatest fighters of all time coming back after a four-year hiatus. Are you truly going to tell me that you are not interested in that fight? Liar. Jesse Levine says you need a Snickers. Liar! Not yourself. Grab a Snickers. Okay. I have, I have a request for the fans. Okay. Two things. Yes. One, we need the promo that Ariel described. Make it. Yes. Make that promo. Just use my clip right the there. I just did it for you. I just sold and the then, damn card. <laughs> Tommy Toehold, please watch that last five uh, minutes and, and do something with it. Oh I'm, beg dear. I'm begging you. We have talented fans out there. Make the promo. Tommy, do something with Ariel's uh, rant just now. Okay. Lyoto Machida said that uh, the USADA era hasn't been a net positive for the USC. What do you say? I think it's been a mixed bag. I think for the most part, it's, it's helped clean up the sport, but there are some issues there. Here's my problem when I think of USADA. It's not so much what's happening. It's how we got to this point. The fact that the fighters didn't have a seat at the table. The fact that they weren't able to sit down and negotiate a proper deal. So I always think of that whenever I think about the USADA stuff and I try to think of, you know, what got us to this point. Ultimately, I like the fact that fighters are, you know, that the sport is getting cleaned up and, and, and they're sort of being watched over, but... I don't like the fact that they had no say in it. Yep. So that's a problem for me. Technical question. Would we ever consider live streaming the media day, similar to how the, the weigh-ins are live streamed? Is that even allowed? Is that even something? Well, I'm that would doing be all the interviews there, so it's kinda it's kinda hard, you know? 
could you do the interviews live? Could you do it on the mm, fly? Don't love doing that because there's like conversations that happen beforehand and you're waiting. And by the way, it's kind of boring at times. Like it's, you know, like you're waiting for 10 minutes to talk to someone. So I don't think you're missing much. You're not getting the best product if we do that. No. Just just rest assured that rest assured. MMA fighting and Ariel are providing the best that, that can be done. Got your back. Take take the weigh-ins and, and the, you know, low golf voice and then the videos that come out of yeah. Media Day. Redefining this game. Question for me from Christopher Kitt. Can you compare the differences between the two versions of Rick, Rick's picks? What do you prefer and which was more tough? Well, couldn't be more different. Yeah. MMA Good betting, concept. completely different from picking the best of the week. Which was more tough? Uh, it's tougher to find fresh content every single week and easier to make fight picks. It's tougher to upkeep the, the competition aspect of it and all that stuff week to week. But... I like them both, and I hope you guys enjoy Rick's picks. Last question. Level of interest in the new Star Wars trailer coming out today Oh, the franchise in general. I didn't know Are that. you a Star Wars fan? I'm not a Star Wars fan. I have not seen all the Star Wars. I don't think Ugh. I've seen one from start to finish, Ugh. but I will tell you this. My second son, Walter, for some reason, I think I mentioned this before, is a big Star Wars fan. Because he actually just got a Stormtrooper uh, outfit for Halloween. And... Uh, Loves Darth He's Vader, normal. but he likes the bad guys. It's very bizarre. Good, they're great. The bad guys are the best part. So Boba Fett, Darth Vader. I will show him this. Is it for kids? Yeah, of course. Uh, Star Wars movies are never really that. Uh, well, I showed him. I showed him when Darth Vader became Darth Vader, like when he was all like yeah. burnt up, and it was very graphic. Not for kids. I'd say that's probably the most graphic thing you're gonna see. By the way, he loved it. He asked me to watch it a million times. So, go figure. I don't know what to say about that. When's it coming out? Later, early next year? November. November. Wow, really quick. Wait. Um, but the trailer's coming out. Oh, when is the trailer coming out? Yeah. The trailer's coming out today. And the movie's if it's coming not out? already out. The movie's coming out in a month? That, according to Rob. Wow. He's going to double check that. Damn. But, um, yeah, the trailer is supposed to come out today. Cool. Um, or if it's not already out. We've been doing this show for, for a few hours, and I, and I haven't checked in on the Star Wars trailers. But How dare you. December wow. 18th, the movie. That's that's fun. And it's a Disney production, right? Disney. Who's the director? It's a Disney joint. Is it J.J. Um, Abrams? No, I don't think so. Um, who's the director, Rob? While you find that out, let me tell you that uh, this weekend is a very quiet weekend in the world of MMA. LFA. Ryan who? No UFC, no Bell. I love how Ryan the- Johnson, director. I love how we've finally got some activity back there. Ryan Johnson, director. Just want to make and, sure everyone uh, is awake. December 15th. All right. Uh, so no, I, I can't say I'm excited for it because I didn't know it was <laughs> actually coming out. This is a big deal, the release of the trailer. Are you excited for it? I'm excited about it. Yeah, I love Star Wars. Yeah, man. I, I watch the movies a ton. My dad would yeah. uh, sit down with Star me. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. No, Never but, got into Star Trek. Okay. Although those movies are also good. The new, the new uh, movies. Two... Big franchises that I never got into, Star Wars, and believe it or not, I know this is going to shock a lot of people, Rocky. What? Yeah. I have not seen all the Rockies. What is wrong with you? Yeah, I'm not a big movie guy. I like to live in the now. But it's a movie about fighting. I know. I just like to watch real fights, not fake fights. Like pro wrestling. (laughs) You've never wait. So let's let's let's. I've not seen this. all the Rockies. You've okay, but you've seen Rocky. I'll tell you one. which. I'll tell you the only Rocky that I've seen from start to finish. I kid you not. Rocky Balboa. The worst one. The Mason the Line Dixon one. Yeah, I saw that in theaters. Oh, I also saw the this one. This is worse than last week. <clears throat> I also saw Apollo. That was really good. Apollo. You mean uh, Creed? Creed. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God, Ariel. <laughs> this is a this is a disaster. But the other ones like people are like oh Thunder Lips. Yeah, I've seen those like scenes with Hulk Hogan, but I've not seen the whole. <laughs> Rob sent me a, a note that said how, how many Degrassi episodes have you I've seen? I've seen a ton of those <laughs> yeah. especially the Drake years the Drake years were phenomenal Jimmy uh, right? Jimmy was his name? yeah yep 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 no I don't know if that's actually true I think that uh, Wheelchair Jimmy I think was his name I don't know okay but uh, uh, Ariel Disgraceful we'll do a whole other show on this for now we have to say goodbye thank you for your time thank you to everyone in the back um, as I was saying no UFC no Bellator this week but we do have LFA, Cage Warriors, Ryzen, and Glory, the debut of Bigfoot Silva. Woo! Against Rico Verhoeven. 
Eric was uh, New York Rick was very upset about my comments on that fight last week, so I'm just going to say I can't wait for that fight, and I think it's one of the finest pieces of matchmaking that we had ever seen. Uh, Want to talk to Derek Lewis, by the way. No real update on his back. I can report that he is home and he is feeling a little bit better. He was able to fly home, but uh, remains to be seen what happens with that situation. If they rebook that fight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That was a bummer that we didn't get to see it. Congratulations to Verdum on the win over Walt Harris. And also, by the way, congratulations to John Moraga on his great win as well. All right, we have to say goodbye. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. Thank you to everyone who checked in. Thank you to all our guests this week. What a fun show it has been. Thank you very much to Demetrius Johnson. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you very much to Max Holloway. Thank you very much to Ian McCall. Good luck to him. Thank you very much to Carlos Condit. Welcome back. Thank you very much to Frankie Edgar. Good luck on December 2nd. Thank you very much to John Alessio for everything that he has done. Great to catch up with him. Thank you very much to Everlast for stopping by. Thank you very much to Darion Caldwell. Congratulations on becoming the brand new Bellator Bantamweight champion. And of course, thank you very much to the UFC interim champion, Mr. Tony Ferguson, for stopping by on short notice as well. I'm back on Thursday for the MMA Beat. Appreciate everyone for sticking with us on Twitter. And once again, happy Thanksgiving to all my friends up north. Back next week, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. Somebody out.